my main role in life is to uh, run the uh, the family business, which is a Pico factory racing. And then, um, you know, during the week, I also uh, manage the Apico Husqvarna British Championship motocross team. It's pretty much myself that does the lion's share of, uh, you know, of running the team. Obviously, my wife, partner Anna, uh, has an influence as well. So it is, it is the two of us. But the day-to-day -day sort of hands-on stuff, yeah, that's that's really just myself. Uh, you know, from the beginning of the season negotiating with the manufacturers and uh, negotiating with the riders and actually putting the team together it's, it's 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 all done by myself we've been with Husqvarna actually since 2014 uh, that's when we started with it a few reasons again my wife she's Swedish obviously Husqvarna is the Swedish heritage as you can see here you know we've got the heritage bike this year as well uh, it fits well with the company colors and um, yeah we, we've been with them since we started the team in 14 and here we are today. Uh, we've got Martin Barr riding 450s for us this year and uh, Jack Lindsay in the MX2, he's riding the TC252 stroke. But unfortunately Jack was injured at the first round this year so we haven't seen much of him. Uh, hopefully you know, he's making a good recovery and be back soon. I've got um, a small collection of the old two strokes uh, bikes myself, uh, you know, which, which I spent a lot of time um, restoring from the ground up. Uh, so yeah, you, you could say I'm, I'm pretty decent with a set of spanners. Yeah, you know, back in my day, it was literally just fuel at the fuel station. Uh, if you could afford it, you'd mix it up with a bit of Avgas, change your filter, turn your tyre around so you've got a decent edge and go racing. But, you know, at this level that we race at now, everything is so precise, everything needs to be on point. The riders know exactly what they want, how they want it. Uh, so, you know, it, 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 there's a lot of fine tuning at this level. Uh, you know, to get the bikes to perform the way that the riders do. So it takes a lot of effort, a lot of hard work, a lot of hours, a lot of things behind the scene that nobody sees. Uh, you know, most people just see, you know, what you do at the race weekend. And there's a lot goes on during the week uh, to give the riders the bikes that they need. So very time consuming. You know, the end of today uh, all starts with um, packing everything up. That's when it all starts is when the last race finishes, we have to pack everything up. You know, we've got a race truck and a service vehicle. Uh, we've got the bikes, obviously, which we need to clean as, as best we can before we leave the venue. Uh, and then normally for us, it's at least a four hour journey uh, back, back to head north. Um, Monday mornings, you know, my business operates from, from 9 a.m but you'll usually find me in our jet wash bay at 7.30 in the morning. Uh, that's after we've unloaded the truck and the service van and we're you know, washing and cleaning bikes. And then I start work, uh, real work at, at sort of nine o'clock. And then during the course of the week, you know, it's, it's literally a, a straight strip down to frame almost, uh, and then just rebuild the bike uh, from the ground up and go racing again. Uh, you know, silly, Silly little things that can be very time consuming is, you know, chains, sprockets, tires, brake pads, uh, you know, making sure we, you know, if we've had any damage during uh, the last race meeting is, is repairing any damage. And then obviously, you know, interacting with the rider during the week and, and seeing if there's any, uh, any changes that they want to make to, you know, the, the suspension or, you know, any, any settings, ignition, uh, you know, remapping, fueling, you know, there's, there's always fine tuning to be done during the week as well. So it's, uh, it can be a tough long week. We don't necessarily take the engine out after every race meeting, no, but we do have a service uh, interval, uh, you know, so we'll, we'll do so many races before we'll replace a clutch. Uh, and then obviously we'll, uh, we'll keep a keen eye on sort of how many hours the, the engine's done before we meet need to change any pistons and you know and things like that so we are working to a schedule uh, and, and you know touch, touch wood um, we've uh, in all of our time using the Husqvarna bikes we've never really had any any serious mechanical issues so we've been lucky from that sense but I think that's because we do keep on top of everything uh, you know make sure that the bikes are right and presentable uh, for each race that we go to yeah, no, I mean, Martin's very kind on the bike, which, which does help an awful lot. Uh, so, you know, he's, uh, he's, he's not very aggressive on the engine, so he's quite happy with a, with a standard stock engine. 
Uh, obviously, we have some uh, some uh, mapping changes that we do in the ECU, which is uh, all electronic. So you know that's done from a laptop, uh, and we you know we can monitor and manage all that as well. So thankfully, you know Martin's pretty pretty kind to us in that respect. He's doesn't do uh, doesn't create a lot of damage or uh, any unnecessary repairs that need doing. Is 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 a good rider to work with. So we're running the uh, the standard replica of Vertex piston uh, in the engines. Uh, the, you know the camshafts all 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 standard. We don't really do any uh, any major work from there. We do some polishing in the gearbox, which just gives it uh, a little bit uh, you know easier gear changes. Uh, but other than that, you know, it's it's pretty much straight out of the shop. Uh, very you know almost identical to to what most people would be would be riding themselves really. The bikes are reliable straight out of the box. You know, whether you're racing at British Championship level or if you're racing at club level, uh, what you see here is is exactly the same. It's, there's no real difference, and that's test testament really to to how well the the Husqvarna motorcycles are actually put together. Uh, you know, they are a very strong, reliable uh, package straight from the crate. So you don't really need to do an awful lot. Well, if we look at the engine first, obviously uh, the exhaust systems that we're using is, is uh, HGS. Uh, they've been a partner of ours now for several years. Good, strong, reliable exhaust pipe. Uh, it gives us nice power uh, with the mixture then obviously with the ECU work that we do with the standard engine, HGS pipe, uh, the GETS uh, ECU that we run. Do a little bit of fueling, bit of mapping, strong package straight off. The GET ECU, to be fair, uh, is a very uh, advanced te technical product, um, but it is, as they say themselves, it's a plug and play product. So again, club riders, they can have the same equipment that we have on our bikes for Martin, uh, and there are so many different variables that they can, that they can change without uh, overcomplicating matters to give them uh, a, more of an aggressive power or, or a much softer, subtle, manageable power uh, and you can make all these changes on, on a switch on the handlebar. If you want to get a little bit more advanced there is also uh, an app available on smartphones, iPhone and Android where you can, um, you can make it further changes, you can look at uh, service intervals. If you do have any issues with uh, any mechanical issues the app on the phone will actually identify where the problem is. So it's a real good service tool as well. Uh, and gives you uh, tons of different uh, parameters that you can change the power delivery on the bike depending on the terrain, the conditions uh, or even rider ability. So a very, very advanced piece of kit. In the winter time we, uh, we did quite a lot of testing with Martin because the 23 Husqvarna is a completely new bike to what we raced last year in 22. Uh, it's a new chassis, it's a new engine, new uh, swing arm. Uh, the dimensions are different so we did quite a lot of testing in the winter to get Martin comfortable uh, and, and happy with uh, where, you know with his base settings uh, which was which was really good for us in the winter and then yeah we can make one or two very small changes on the day just depending on what Martin requires uh, for that particular venue we get asked this question quite a lot what's the thing on your front mug guard <laughs> well it actually um, it serves two purposes really. One, it gives the rider uh, a visual in terms of the map setting that they are using at that one time because it gives you a solid blue light indicator uh, marking from one to ten. So if you are on, uh, if you've got five solid lights then you're on map setting number five. So it's a very good visual for the rider to understand which map setting they're actually currently using. The second um, the second part that the thing on the front mudguard does is actually a, what they call an LCGPA, which ultimately is uh, it's a launch control device uh, for the start. So the rider can then engage the LCGPA uh, launch control device, uh, and that will give them some uh, a much better control of the motorcycle off the start grid. Uh, once they've entered into the first turn and the RPMs have dropped uh, considerably, then it will revert back into its, its standard map position. So whilst during the race, then 
again the indicator shows to the rider we're in race mode so yeah you can make some adjustments to the LCGPA in the map um, in, or in the advanced setting side of things but straight out of the box onto the bike it's good to go for most people like Martin himself you know we haven't done much changes to that we're just plug and play Martin's happy happy rider fast rider there are two map, map positions on a switch on the handlebar uh, but once you're once you're actually in a race situation it will stay in that position you, you need to stop the bike to alter the map position before you can then restart the the standard ECU yes there is a map switch with launch control but it it's very limited on what you can do with it. Yeah, you put the Get ECU package together and it gives you so, much, so many more possibilities. Quick Shift is basically a pulse from the ECU, um, which it reduces the RPM in a split second whilst the gear is being changed. Martin was just quite happy as it was. It's not really something that we felt was a major benefit for us. <coughs> no, Martin actually um, is a rider that actually prefers much smoother power. Uh, so the map settings that we've got built in there, it is uh, very smooth because Martin likes to pull a taller gear. Uh, so he's not, uh, I would say he's not somebody who is very aggressive on the throttle. He's also not very aggressive on the clutch. He, he much prefers to ride at a slightly taller gear and be a lot smoother in the, in the turns uh, and in the straights. It's a brand new bike for 2023, uh, the FC 450 Husqvarna. And you know, as soon as I jumped on it, straight away, it, uh, it felt so comfortable. Um, a lot better than the previous model, especially with the handle and the chassis. Um, you know, you could turn it a lot better and stuff. So, yeah, it was um, a lot of positives. I'm a pretty smooth rider, so I like the, the, the power delivery pretty smooth and stuff. Um, but, you know, obviously it needs a lot of torque as well, just to try and get out of that gate, uh, out of the corners and stuff. So. But as a rider, I'm not overly fussy. Um, you know, I, I, I have a really good base setting and I don't really need to change much from that. You know, Scott from Planet Suspension has been doing my stuff for years. So he uh, knows what way I like it and set, sets it up really good for me. So, um, you know, as a whole package, it's, it's really good. I, I actually feel very blessed to have Martin on the team because he is very kind on the bikes. Uh, he's not aggressive on clutches, I think. I think so far this season we've only actually replaced one clutch all year um, even down to brake pads we're actually changing a set of rear brake pads today that have done at least five or six races so in terms of uh, wearing parts out the fact the way that he rides very kind on the engine not over aggressive on clutches not constantly wearing brake pads and brake discs out so from a cost point of view he's very kind on the pocket as well yeah, so last year we, um, we actually ran the WP corn valve and track shocks, uh, which was Martin's preference. Obviously this, this bike for this year, 23, like I've said already, uh, new chassis, uh, new suspension, uh, and we did some back-to-back -back testing with last year's suspension compared to the, uh, the stock. Uh, and again, Martin was, um, was actually quite happy with, with the stock suspension. Uh, planet suspension uh, do some extra work for him there so they sort of they look after and maintain and service the the forks and shock on a regular basis uh, we just stuck with the standard air suspension that comes in the bike and you know we've been really really enjoying it and um, we've got it working really good and you know it, I just think it's a bit more uh, easier to use um, you know the other stuff that you can get is you know a couple of clicks here could send you a mile off uh, where you need to be. So um, yeah, we, we've, we've stuck with the air. The bike is more or less completely stock, um, just with you know an ignition, a pipe, uh, and then the golf race feel. So um, yeah, as a much, it's, uh, it's, re it's really good. You know, uh, it's just basically straight out of the box with those parts on it and that's it. Um, I love riding it. Um, it feels as if it's my bike and I feel part of it. So that, that's the main thing. Yeah, so components on the bike there, uh, Talon, uh, they provide us with their uh, um, Talon hubs and uh, XL rim sets. We have um, Pirelli tyres, uh, we run the, uh, the MX32 fronts and then we have the, the two options with the uh, MX32 intermediate rear uh, and the 410 paddle tyre. Um, 
which you know we've been sponsored by Pirelli now for, for several years and it's for us it's the go-to tyre. We, we generally run mooses um, depending on the track surface. If we go to a sandy circuit uh, then we're more than likely to run tubes which gives you a slightly better feel uh, through the handlebars. Uh, but if we go to it like a track today where there's a little bit of stone and granite through there we can't really afford to have a puncher and, and not finish a race so we, uh, we tend to use mooses when it's uh, a little bit stony or hard underground. At all the race meetings we will have two race bikes which always need to turn up with new tyres on and uh, then we have two sets of extra wheels in the service truck which also have new tyres, mooses and tubes in so we've got all the different variations every weekend so we have sort of at least six sets of everything every time we go racing and then you multiply that by at least 17 to 20 races in a year and then you can quickly quickly add up just how you know how much uh, tire and uh, you know how many tires we actually go through in a season that's not taking into account all the practicing testing and riding during the week um, so you know it, it's a serious amount of uh, rubber that we can get through in a, in a whole year uh, how many tyres have I changed so far this year? Probably 50 or 60. And just deck a point to throw. We use the Boyson uh, clutch covers, uh, which is a billet product. Gives it a lot more strength. Uh, again, especially on today's like today, where there's quite a bit of stone through the track. The last thing we want is something going through the side of the clutch case. Uh, so we use the Boyson products, super strong. There's a lot of heritage with the Boyson brand uh, and I just think it looks really cool. We also, uh, we also have the Boyson water pump uh, super coolers, which is, is, a, is a great addition for the, uh, for the big 450s because they do get really, really hot. Um, so we use the super cooler, which is a, it's a bigger impeller which obviously allows the flow of the, uh, the coolant uh, to get around the engine much easier and again really strong and looks really cool. We've run the standard radiators, uh, we don't need to go oversize on the radiators, like I said the, the, the Boyson super cooler uh, is, uh, does a sufficient job to keep the keep the engines cool enough. We have changed the um, this away from the standard radiator hoses. We use Samco hoses. Again, they're a lot stronger, much more durability, uh, less chance of a you know an incident with a hose. So you know we use Samco for that purpose because it just gives us uh, a lot of comfort that we're not going to have any issues. So again, with the Talon wheels, we use the uh, the Talon sprockets uh, front and rear. Uh, and we use the uh, Regina RX3 uh, chains uh, to accommodate with the sprockets. So yeah, we've, um, with Martin, you know, we've played around with different gearing, uh, but like I've said already, you know, he, he's very kind on the bike, so we don't need to make too many dramatic changes with that. Uh, he's fairly com comfortable with a, with a relatively standard gearing on the bike. Uh, you know, it works well with the, with the, with the strength of the engine and, and, you know, Martin's happy. But, you know, if we need to change it, we have the product on site uh, and we can, we can soon make a quick change on gearing. On the air intake side of things, we use the Twin Air uh, Power Flow Kit, uh, which is a, it's a billet cage which sits inside a fire retardant filter. Uh, it allows it to have a much better seal uh, around the air box so we don't get any dirt, uh, any sand, any grime in there. Uh, and then obviously we can, uh, we can then add the addition of the, uh, the, the Grand Prix filter cover on top of the uh, air filter itself, especially on those days where it's really dusty and quite sandy and dusty, uh, you know, where there's a lot of breeze around, just helps any, any dirt getting, uh, uh, making contact with the filter. Yeah, the twin air radiator uh, covers are also a great addition, especially if, it's, um, if the sand's, sand or the dirt uh, is quite uh, moist, there's a lot of moisture in the ground, it just prevents any blockages on the front of the radiator grills. That obviously then helps with uh, you know, the, the, the coolant flow and, and, and reduces the temperature on the engine. So on the control side of things, we, uh, we use the Pro Taper uh, handlebars, Pro Taper grips uh, and bar pads. <coughs> and then we also have for the, uh, for the start of the race, the Pro Taper cellar whole shot device, which is quite unique in its own right. 
that uh, the twist of the uh, the twist of the dial on the whole shot button allows the rider to engage the whole shot device on his own so he doesn't need any outside assistance when you're racing at British Championship level and you you, you go down to the start line you've 40 riders uh, usually there's 40 mechanics all trying to engage the start device for their own riders but well, the beauty with this product is Martin can actually engage it himself uh, so there's no outside interference uh, he can concentrate about you know on the start himself uh, gate drops away he goes the mechanics and myself don't need to stress he he's in total control of his own whole shot destiny uh, the the bodywork on the on the on the bike is uh, polysport um, again that's a brand that has supported us for many years now great durable long-lasting products uh, all the way through to frame guards swing arm guards to do a lot of protection but we choose to just use the standard OEM replica plastics by Polysport uh, and then we dress the plastics with um, with the graphics which is supplied to us uh, from Jim at Motorshack. Protection wise as well we uh, we run uh, pro, pro carbon disc guards again just a really durable hard wearing strong disc guard the last thing that we need is an impact uh, on the disc, we bend the disc, then that's the end of the race. So we use the disc guards from Pro Carbon, but we also have the addition of the Pro Carbon uh, sump guards. Again, gives just great durable protection for the underside of the frame. Uh, the brake systems on the bike, again, we just run the standard uh, Brembo uh, OEM uh, brake master cylinders and calipers. Brembo's a fantastic uh, braking system. Uh, so we've got no reason to, to, to upgrade that. However, we do add some uh, some nice Sapico factory racing bling uh, just to make it that look that little bit nicer. So the fuel for the uh, for the bikes that we run is actually uh, Gulf race fuels, very iconic brand around the world in in all forms of motorsport. And we've been using Gulf now for for two full seasons. We did some dyno testing. Uh, in the previous year and the improvements that we saw with the race fuel was actually quite staggering. Uh, one is the consistency of the fuel compared to normal everyday pump fuel. Uh, it's consistent every every can you get in the same product. We also saw a big improvement on the the cooling side uh, of the engines with running the, the race fuel it actually keeps the the temperature of the engine much much lower which in turn means you're, you're wearing parts out a lot less. So race fuel can be quite expensive, but in the long run, uh, the, 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 the savings that you get from wearing parts in the engine outweighs the investment. Performance wise, we saw a massive gain when we did some dyno, uh, dyno work. Uh, so for us, it's just no brainer. Gulf race fuel, Gulf 102 works for us. Obviously from the business side of things, uh, we have uh, some accessories for, for all motorcycles, not just for the Husqvarna's. Uh, it doesn't matter what the manufacturer is, uh, we have all of the accessories available and we choose to use our own Apico factory racing parts. Various different bits and pieces, axle blocks, master cylinder covers, all that sort of thing. Uh, makes the bike look very special and very nice. And then I personally like to finish, um, finish the bikes off with as much titanium uh, product as I can. Not only does it look cool, but it actually saves a lot of weight as well. Uh, so yeah, we choose to use Dot Wobbs titanium products uh, just to finish the bike off and make it look pretty on the eye.